Welcome to the Ultimate Heavy Paint 101 tutorial. Be grateful. I'm resetting my UI for you. Alright. We have two floating boxes here. We can move them around with handles. We can also change their size from top left or top right. The same is true for all other boxes in Heavy Paint. All UI settings are inside this gear button. Like UI scale, the border size, and changing the colors for UI, accents in the default canvas color. I'm toggling on the modes box and the timer box. Play with other toggles as you wish, I'm just setting it up the way I like. I want you to open and figure out. How would you like the UI to be for yourself? And if you mess up while playing, you can reset UI anytime. There's a reset UI option in the gear button. The three dot handles have multiple options inside, to modify the box they belong to. The arrow points to the changes I made. Our UI is now complete. Also, if you missed, the layers can be toggled from this button right here. Now let's look at the main controls. For demonstration, we're using the hard round tool preset. At number 1 we have a size slider. On clicking the size slider, a pop-up appears with three buttons. They are pretty self-explanatory, and depend on your input device. Number 2 is the eyedropper. At number 3 we have color jitter. Experiment different combinations for yourself. Don't worry about messing up, the changes you made won't get saved, yet. Restart heavy paint, and things will go back to as they were. At last is rotation. We'll demonstrate rotation with my favorite brush, the rake. There are different rotation modes, play with them. Alright, it's time for the favorites bar. Clicking on the add button pops open a box with all the available tool presets. I selected the tree tool preset here. Using the heart button, I added tree tool to the favorites bar. Then removed it using the heart button again. The plus button creates a duplicate of selected tool. You can perform even more actions from here. The floppy button saves any changes we made, thus overriding the selected tool. Clicking a tool opens up a parameter box. <coughs> Texture. And various other parameters of the tool can be changed here. The reverse button will reset the tool preset. This floppy button also saves and overwrites, as we talked before. The three dots handle have more options inside, they're pretty self-explanatory. We now know reverse button can reset our tool. However, if you messed up many tool presets and want to clean everything, you can go to the gear button, then reset tools. It can also be accessed from the Add button in Favorites bar. By the way, there's a grayscale button in Favorites bar, pretty handy. Before moving to the next part, I want to explain something. There's a reason why I don't keep tools like the Stencil, the Transform and Mirror X, in the Favorites bar. It's because they also exist in the Layer Modifiers, which I feel is a more suitable place. And I also don't have smudges, or erasers, in the favorites bar. That's because this thing exists. The modes bar. Let me demonstrate how epic it is. Modes bar changes modes of our selected brush. First is draw mode. Second is eraser mode. Third is smudge mode, with extra parameters on top. Fourth is blur mode. 
and at last we have mixed mode. Well, hard round is not a good example for showing the smudge mode. So let's use a brush dry in smudge mode. Also you always have the default ones you can use anytime if you like. Let's say I really like this smudge pastel tool preset, I can add it to my favorites bar. Time for our second last topic, the layer bar. Plus button adds new layer on top of current one. These buttons move the selected layer, up or down. Stencil is same as Alpha Lock in other programs. You cannot draw outside the already filled area in current layer. Here's Transform in action. Alright, we're almost at the end now. However, I want to share some things before continuing to end. Hotkeys. Figure them out yourself. The most essential ones, at least for me are, E for eraser mode of current tool. Space for color picker. And Shift plus F for flipping canvas. Another thing. Rest of all this, it is out of bounds for today. Boo however much you want, it is what it is. Oh. Have a look at some tool presets by the way. Pretty cool. Now finally we're at the last part. This floppy button saves your drawing. And also pops up all this. New creates a new page. This arrow also creates a new page, if you're on the last one. Let's draw on it. Let's save this using floppy button. Delete will delete the page forever. It's gone. Now let me show you around my heavy paint sketchbook. Heavy paint will start to render our drawing stroke by stroke. We can make it render as fast as our machine can, by clicking the replay circle. You must be confused as to why it takes your machine so much juice, just to show the drawing. Well heavy paint is unlike other art programs that store the stroke information as pixel data. Instead it stores stroke information as vector data. You might not care about it yet, but I'll show you something cool soon. Even my machine takes a few seconds when rendering big drawings. I'll let the spoon replay play for you to watch. The stats is one of my favorite things. It shows very cool info. About the drawing. Even all the tool usage, and the strokes, the colors chosen. Sweet! Here comes Resize. This is very special, and unlike other art programs. So the benefit of storing vector data is that, we can resize our drawings both down in resolution, and up in resolution. Epic! This is not some algorithmic upscaling by the way. It's full on re-rendering of drawing at higher fidelity. This is like Blender, in video games. So we can draw on a small resolution canvas, and after finishing, export it at a higher resolution. This is unreal. Here are the export options, most are pretty self-explanatory. The export HP option exports as a .hp file, which can be opened in heavy paint and contains all your layers and stats and everything else too. Here I'm exporting the spoon as a PNG at a higher resolution. After exporting image, I resize the file itself to lower resolution again to save resources. You can also import PNG images in your file. Aight, we're done here. Wait, it's bonus time!
Look at this shapes box. It can change the tool type for your selected tool. Pretty cool. I'm gonna demonstrate it with our homie, a hard round tool preset. The type of a tool can be changed, as you can see there are 10 fundamental types. All tool presets actually are built on these 10 fundamental tools. The only missing feature currently, is merging layers. This is hard to implement because of vector data probably, the only downside for some people. However I would say that we should use minimum layers in the first place, even my drawing are usually only two layers. Oh by the way you can darken and tint your layers like this, there are no layer modes like overlay or color dodge, get wrecked. Well, that brings us to the end. Enjoy heavy paint, hopefully it'll help you become a better artist, like it helped me. See ya!